Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. On today's episode, I figured I would take you all through Hamones. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw a recent build that I did, which was this guy, if I can get it in frame here, which is a Bowie knife that will be for sale. I'm gonna be selling at Blade Show. Uh, but I didn't do a build video on it, but I figure I would talk to you guys about hamones and all about how to get a good hamone on your knife. So what is a hamone? Well, hamone is actually a Japanese term for a differential hardening line. And what is that? Well, what that is, is the line that you see across the blade occurs because the top of the blade um, quenches at a different rate than the bottom of the, um, the edge of the blade. And that gives you that line because the top of the blade is soft while the edge is nice and hard. And it will give you the nice line. So it's not just an aesthetics thing, it's there for a reason to soften the spine of the blade. It's very common in Japanese uh, constructions like katanas and things like that uh, that will have a hamon. So I'll admit, I used to think that hamons were, you know, for people that couldn't do Damascus or didn't have the capacity. I've grown to love uh, hormones, uh, and I certainly think they are an art form all in themselves. So let's go down to the table. And we'll talk about hormones and how you can get a really nice one on your blade. So the first thing to really talk about when it comes to hormones is steel selection. To get a hormone, the steel must be a fast quenching steel or something that requires very fast quenchant. Uh, and uh, if you're not sure what I mean, then I suggest you go watch this video up in the corner. This is all about heat treating and talks about slow versus fast quenching. But the steels that are really best for this are the um, water quenching steels. I'm using air quotes here because we don't actually quench them in water. We use fast quench oils like Parks 50. So. The best steels for a hormone by far is W2. That's what this um, blade is. It's made from W2. Uh, anything that you can kind of quench in Parks 50 will usually give you a hormone, but the, uh, the faster the steel quenches, the better the hormone is going to be because that's what's going to give you this differential line because if it's a really slow quenching steel like 5160, uh, it's not really going to matter that you've covered the top part with clay because it cools so slowly it doesn't you're not going to see that line so first thing is pick the right steel so in order i would say w2 w1 1095 1080 those are really the steels that i would consider ones that you can get a hormone with um, w2 definitely the best so let's talk about prep so when you're preparing your blade um, you know, right before you quench, you get it all done, you get it, um, you know, obviously ground and profiled and all of that stuff. And then you're going to get it sanded up to at least 1500, preferably 2000 grit. I know that's painful. Um, and that's why hormones take a long time. This is one of those things that will take a while, but you will have a much better product if you do that. So sand it all the way up to 2000 and then apply your clay. And let's talk about the application of the clay. So let's talk about the actual clay. Um, there's a lot of different clays you can use for this. What I use, and I, I have it in this jar because I think I broke the, uh, the container for it, but this is, uh, I think it's called Hamon Glop. Uh, and I think I got this from USA Knife Maker years ago and I just keep using it. Uh, you can use, um, furnace cement uh, there's lots of things you can use uh, you know you find whatever you whatever you want and what works for you uh, one thing you don't want to do is put this on too thick put this on relatively like I would say no more than certainly no more than an eighth of an inch thick and I'm gonna draw it here don't just do this okay don't just put your uh, your clay on like this because then you're going to get a really boring line <laughs> that almost you know has no action to it and what you're going to need to do is put this in a much more aggressive um, looking contour 
the, even than your what you think you're going to need on the blade. So what I would suggest is you do something like this. And you see these radical dives here, like this, and put little kind of fingers coming out from them. This is what gives you those wispy areas. If you just do a straight line, you're going to get a boring straight line. These things, remember, this is where heat's going to go. So this one might turn into a little wisp. And I'll show you on my actual knife, these wispy parts here. Okay, which is kind of what you're going for. That's because these, and I probably didn't go up quite this far, but pretty close, like the clay probably went up to here on the knife. And exactly where your clay is, is not gonna be where your line is. So be aggressive on how you do these contours and really put some thought into it. If um, you go look at Jared Ball, who I think is one of the best makers of Hamones out there. I'll put his link to his Instagram. And he's helped me a lot um, over my experience with Hamones and, and just watching how he does the patterns on the blades. And he gets really, really elaborate uh, Hamone lines. So check his Instagram out. But definitely don't be afraid to be really radical here. Don't just do a line. So remember when I told you about sanding it up to 2000? One of the reasons for that is if you sand this to 400 or something like that and then you quench it, you're actually going to see these lines, like horizontal lines. And you kind of see, I'll zoom in a little bit, right here, you kind of see some horizontal lines. Uh, that's probably um, due to that, but over in this area, you don't really see that as much. Um, probably because there was a couple lines here. So I attribute this to grinding and sanding lines, which are always usually going this way. You never usually see these going the other way. So be mindful of that. When you actually quench uh, with a hamon, you don't want to see these kind of horizontal lines too much. So that's why you want to go to 2000 grit. So after you got your clay applied, and again, apply it relatively thin, let it dry fully meaning probably 24 hours of drying. Do not try to be in a hurry, put your clay on and then throw it in the oven and then try to quench it because all of your clay is gonna come off and you'll get a really weird look. Um, it just will look bad. So don't rush this. Make sure the clay is nice and dry and hard. Some people on some clays will actually wrap wire around the blade and then they'll put the clay over that and that just helps the clay stick. I've never had to do that with this um, Hamon Glop because it sticks really well. So use what you need to. Just a reminder, folks, this Saturday, all of the videos for the Chopper Challenge launch. You definitely want to check that out. So let's talk about the actual quench. It's really no different than anything else. Um, you're going to quench it. Use engineered quench oil. If you're just going to bother quenching your, your knife in canola, you're wasting your time. <laughs> Just don't do it. Get the right quench oil um, so that you'll get the right outcome. We're not talking about breaking the bank here. So you want a good product, get the right materials. Okay, let's assume that your quench went well, everything went great, and now it's time to finish the blade. Obviously, you're going to do any kind of final grinding, any kind of final sanding. You're going to do that now. Get your blade down to whatever it is, I would still go to at least 1500 and get it nice and prepared. So let's assume I've got this blade nice and clean, 1500. You should definitely see the hamon, but not very well. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do a ferric bath, meaning we're going to dip our blade for about three to five minutes in ferric. Okay. Then clean it off and do it again. Okay. So Basically, you're going to do two ferric baths, at least that's what I do, and then it'll come to the polishing step. So from the polishing step, from the last, you take it out of the ferric on the second time, what we're going to do is get some of this super polish 1500, basically this is 1500 grit silica powder, and I'll put a link down in the description for this stuff. It's really cheap, I think it was, 
actually I don't remember how much it was because I bought it a while ago. Um, but you just mix this in a really, really um, kind of almost dry, muddy solution with like some three-in-one oil. And then it'll be a paste. You're going to put it on like a cotton ball or one of those cotton makeup pads and basically scrub the blade. And you're going to put a lot more pressure at the bottom of the blade than at the top. Okay, but you're going to just work all these areas and just polish this over and over and over and just keep going. And this will give you this kind of right below the hamon. You see there's like a more silvery line. It'll bring all of that out. And the same, I should just flip this over for you guys. Uh, you'll see the same thing, that nice silvery line, and it's a little darker right above that line. So you want that kind of contrast, and that's what this stuff is going to do. And then at the end, you're just going to oil it and grease it as you would normally. That's it, folks. It's as simple as that. I got this image from Jared's Instagram, and I think it's a really good one. The left portion is after sanding. The middle one is after ferric. And the right one is after polishing. And you can see how it looks like almost a negative from the ferric one. But after polishing, you can see what the final looks like. This is really cool. So I hope this video on how to do a hamon helped you guys out. If there was anything I missed or any steps that you were unclear, definitely um, comment down in the comment section and I'll try to answer those. And hopefully you can get a hamon uh, like this or better. Thanks, folks. We'll see you on the next one.